these are times NBA players humiliated their opponents. And at number 10, Kevin Durant almost broke someone's leg. Durant, the fake, the second, oh! Damn, he caught dude slipping. But at number nine, Andrew Wiggins taught a white boy he can't jump. Snaps it outside to Wiggins. Goes by Boo. Oh! Drops the sledgehammer! And Wiggins not only put dude on a poster, the next time he was on camera, everybody saw he put the dunk on a custom t shirt for his daughter to wear. But at least she didn't get humiliated by Zion Williamson, like the kids at number eight. It all started when he showed up to a local gym to spend his day hooping with fans. And one kid decided to talk some shit. Uh, oh, what that mean? Uh, better go. You no, he, what? What? You don't even believe that. But hold up. Last time I checked, Zion's 6'6 six six and 284 pounds. Unless that kid's stepdaddy is Shaq. I don't think he should have said all of that. Because now Zion felt he had to prove who daddy was. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, 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 what? Hey bro. He said, he said he got me. Wow, Sion's low key a bully, man. He better learn before it's too late. Cause sometimes humiliating your opponents can go horribly wrong. Like it did for the Warriors at number seven. This wasn't just any game. This game decided which team was guaranteed a playoff spot. And right from the jump, the Warriors tried to secure that and dominated both ends of the floor. So they started getting cocky, and Jordan Poole was the first of the Warriors to start running his mouth, which got Anthony Davis pissed. But he is in the head of Anthony Davis. You never want to, you know, poke the bear. It's funny, I told Jordan Poole that too. He didn't woke me up. But no matter what AD said, Poole didn't care. He just hit another three. And that even made his teammate, Juan Toscano Anderson, get confident enough to trash talk LeBron. So the first half ended with the Lakers down double digits. Cause LeBron and AD were having their worst games of the year. LeBron had just six points and AD had five. But this was the final straw. And well, I don't know what went on in that locker room, but as soon as they stepped back on the court with a point to prove, they took over. Green trying to jam it, but James and Drummond are right there. James and Lamb block a foul, count it, and once. Lob it in, Davis throws it down. The Lakers fought all the way back, and LeBron was even smacking the dude who trash talked him on back to back possessions. But even though the Lakers were somehow now in the lead, without a win, it would be all for nothing. And everything came down to one of the most legendary shots in NBA history. Side, he's tied up by Green. Throws it back up top. James puts up the three. Oh, it's gone! LeBron James from downtown! Just like that, the Warriors trash talk bit them in the ass. But they're just lucky things stayed on the court. Because at number six, Damian Lillard humiliated Shaq in the studio. Dame goes by the rap name Dame Dalla. And what he's done in his rap career is damn near as impressive as his basketball career. Because not only has he made a song that's gotten millions of views, even some of the greatest rappers of all time, like Lil Wayne, have hopped on his tracks. So when he hopped on a podcast, of course the topic of NBA rappers came up. But once some names got thrown around, he let them all know how he really felt. You think you got better music than Shaq? I think I rap better than Shaq. You think so? Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm sure Dame knew what he was doing, but Shaq isn't one of those NBA players who just rap in his free time. The man literally dropped an album called Shaq Diesel that went platinum. And he too made a song with one of the most legendary rappers ever, the Notorious B.I.G. So Shaq wasn't about to let some young kid son him. And he hopped in the booth to send shots. Always bragging about they little max contract. Dame got a little money when it comes to Shaq. You see this flow, got a little hall of fame on it. Dame shoot jumpers, Shaq still banged on it. So yeah, it was obvious that Shaq took the words Dame said very personally. But as Dame watched himself get clowned online, and Shaq's song racked up over a million views, Dame dropped a tweet letting the world know what was coming when he said, training camp starts tomorrow, but he's definitely getting a round out of me. And in less than a day, Dame dropped a song called Rain Rain Go Away. 
Said that Max was little, that 250 million crispy. Can't recall you getting that when I was cruising on the 10 speed. This a different era. You the past and you the past. Said yourself that I'm a Tesla, no longer need diesel gas. Kinda like the Cavs, ain't really need diesel ads. And even in Miami, want that on the strength of flash. Yeah, Dame went in. His song made headlines everywhere. Damian Lillard has proven once and for all he is the best athlete rapper I have ever heard. So after all of that, even though Dame went back to playing for the Blazers, he was crowned the NBA's rap king, and this beat was over. But Dame's just lucky he wasn't beefing with Jalen Brown. Cause at number five, this man humiliated someone so badly, it got him framed. The steal, make the steal. Back to Brown. But when you dunk on an NBA all-star like Donovan Mitchell, screaming in his face and dapping up fans ain't enough. So after the game, Jalen hopped on Twitter to show the dunk to everyone who wasn't watching live. And he told Donovan, I'm definitely getting this frame, bro. Hold up, how are you gonna humiliate a grown man that badly? Then hang it up for your entire family to see. Even Donovan couldn't believe it, so he only responded with this. But Jalen's moment was only against one player during a regular season game. At number four, Stephen Curry humiliated an entire team at the All-Star game. The court was about to be filled with the best players in the NBA, and Steph wasn't scared of any of them. In fact, before the game even started, Mike's picked up what he was thinking about. Can somebody tell me what the record is for the most points? But he brought up a good question. Taking a look at the record books, only one player in All-Star Game history was able to top 50 points. So Steph had his mind on the near impossible, but he was determined. Reigning MVP with the ball moments ago. Jokic in a three by Curry. Dirk Nowitzki way outside. Three is put in. Yes, Curry! Here we go, video game. It's video game time. I just honoring the people that helped. One leg of three. Ten. Had a few flashback nightmares. Stop. There's no words to explain what Steph was on this night. Not only did he have the most legendary three-point shooting performance ever, 16 three-pointers, he dropped 50 points, carried his team to a win, and won the game's MVP. All that while playing some of the most famous players in the world. But at number three, James Harden humiliated a team because of one of the most famous celebrities in the world at the time. Harden was playing for the Rockets and one of the best scorers in the league. So no matter what city he was in, he never needed any extra motivation to catch a dub, then hit the club. But when Harden's Rockets came to Philly, little did he know, he was gonna have to deal with one of the biggest, scratch that, I mean littlest 76ers fan, Kevin Hart. So I decided to go to the Sixers game. James Harden, the whole first quarter, he's just, he's off. And I was like, you know why you off? Because you're in my city. Your beard stinks. He got mad. He said, I'm about to cook you. And after all of that, Harden couldn't miss. But they kept going at it. At some point, I was like, James, this is very unprofessional on your behalf. You're not even supposed to be talking to me this much. <laughs> so after dropping a 51-point triple-double, Harden not only taunted Kevin a little more. He was dribbling the ball and staying in the half court. And he was just staring at me. During the post-game interview, while Kevin was trying to video bomb the entire thing, Harden just had to clown him one last time. He's from here. I had, to, yeah. I had to show him up a little bit. Damn. Harden didn't have to do little bro like that. But after all, Kevin was just trying to have fun. At number two, another player was forced to humiliate Kobe Bryant just so he wouldn't get kicked out of the NBA. February 10th, 2012 is a day the NBA world will never forget. Cause Jeremy Lin stepped into a matchup against the Lakers and this was his final opportunity to prove to the NBA that he belonged. Today his contract expired so the Knicks could cut him without having to pay him a single dollar. And obviously not many teams would be interested in a player who wasn't even good enough to play for the Knicks. So Jeremy knew if he wanted to keep playing basketball, it was now or never. Jeremy Lin told me a week ago, I was just fighting for my job. I didn't even know if I was gonna have a roster spot. Instantly, he scored the Knicks' first points. Then, he started hitting jump shot after jump shot. 
making and ones, and even grabbed Kobe's miss, then turned into prime Kobe. Or spinning, puts it up and oh, banks it in. Yes. Sensational play for Jeremy Lin. But even though Jeremy and the Knicks were doing the unthinkable and looked like they couldn't be stopped, it was only because Kobe Bryant wasn't even trying yet. And Kobe said, you had a great game. <laughs> I swear I looked at the clock like, it's 12 minutes, what you talking about? <laughs> like, what was that? And right after that, Kobe completely took over the game. Fake shot, fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you on? <laughs> Spin, pivot over here, spin back on the foot, drop it off the glass. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Then he wow. pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit before yep. Steph was doing that. <laughs> but even though Kobe was doing the most trying to make a comeback, and literally telling the other team good game as if he was single-handedly gonna win it himself. Jeremy wasn't about to let this ruin his historic night. So he came right back and hit a clutch three. Made a crazy reverse layup. Lynn on the drive, gets inside, banks it in! And carried the Knicks to a completely unexpected victory while finishing with more points than Kobe. 38 to 34. No wonder why after the game, Jeremy's teammates were stunned. But Jeremy was only fueled to humiliate because his job was on the line. There's one final player who had the game of his life because of a murder. The 2019 NBA Finals wasn't what fans thought it was. The Warriors came in and if they stayed healthy, were expected to win their third championship in a row. But the whole time, a player on the other side, Kawhi Leonard, had a secret motivation. The NBA Finals has always been special to Kawhi because it always lands around Father's Day. And ironically, the last time Kawhi played a game on that day, he won a championship with the Spurs. So, he wanted to do it again for his dad. But the thing was, Kawhi's dad couldn't show up to this game because he was working late at the family car wash. Some criminals pulled up, walked up to him, and... Kawhi's dad was shot to death. The suspects fled the scene and the entire situation became one big mystery because the suspects were never found. A situation like this would have devastated anybody, but nobody was more hurt than Kawhi. Still, he had a championship on the line, so the show had to go on. Because not only did he have a chance to win, if he pulled it off, he'd be celebrating on Father's Day. So with dad looking down on him and his Raptors up 3-2, Kawhi wanted to make this a moment him and his dad could enjoy forever. Right from the start, Kawhi wasn't going to be denied. He brought the ball coast to coast and hit jumpers like it was nothing. It didn't matter who was guarding him. Kawhi knocked down his shots. Then, he started hitting and ones, getting defensive stops. Our boy was even hitting threes like a splash brother. Kawhi was giving this game his all, because he knew it was more than just him out there. And eventually, as the clock ticked down, Kawhi did it. Canada, the NBA title is yours. The Toronto Raptors are the 2019 NBA champions. In his first and only season with the Raptors, he carried them to their first championship ever and once again, won himself the Finals MVP. Kawhi became only the third player ever to win a Finals MVP with more than one team. But putting himself in the history books and humiliating one of the greatest teams ever assembled wasn't what he cared most about. Tonight was all to make dad proud. And I wish other players in the NBA thought the same way, but instead, they're just disappointing their parents. I mean, players hate each other so bad, they're willing to break another player's arm or talk so much shit, they get permanently kicked out of the NBA. Things are getting really heated, man. And I know you're trying to hear more about that. So just click this video 